note that Stardust is a 3D effect, meaning that every time that you need them, you can add 3D properties inside After Effects and they will work with this effect, especially cameras, lights, and null objects. So in this case, I'm just going to add a 50 millimeter camera, say OK, just so we'll be able to switch to the camera tool from time to time and take a look at this scene from different angles. Now back to the effect itself, and this is the basic preset. So if I'm going to start a RAM preview, you will see an emitter in the middle of the screen with few particles. And I'm going to talk about the first icon over here, the first tool, which is the emitter. And you can recognize it either by looking at the icon and matching it to what you're seeing over here, or if you're just going to hover above every one of them, you will have a text message which will tell you what each and every one of those tools is doing. All right, so the emitter, I think, is one of the easiest one to explain and understand. Basically, this is where the particles are born. So you have few types to choose from. You can go with simple stuff like point, box, sphere, layer, text or masks, grid, light, ring, and all the way to using some specific and complex stuff like 3D OBJ objects, splines and layer path. Now those will be depending on what you want to achieve. So if you want to take a look at the other option, for example, the box, we can enlarge the particles per second and we can also turn down the speed to zero so nothing is going to move. I'm guessing that you've seen this in other particle systems. So I'm just going to run through those settings. Size will allow you to change the size, of course. So if I'm going to enlarge it to 500 on the X, we will see it being reflected on the composition panel. Same is true for the angle. So this is what will happen if I'm going to change it on the Y angle. And we have few other settings such as the direction of the particles. So in this case, they are shooting uniformly. We can turn it to a directional, bi-directional or outwards. All of those settings will be more easy to understand if we'll have some sort of a speed. So if I'm going to raise the speed, which is also known as velocity in other systems, you can change it to directional, bi-directional and outwards, and you will see it performing over here. Now, I think that one of the easiest way to explore Stardust and understand how each and every tool is working is by using the presets. So once again, I'm going to click on this guy and I'm going to go to nodes. And over here, we have a special folder for emitters. I'm going to start with the text and I'm going to replace everything that I have over here just so you can get a sense of how this is working. In order to get the full story, you need to cache those frames. So this is how this preset is looking. And if I'm going to select the original layer over here, my solid, we can see the, the effect is basically consists of two layers. We have the emitter that was set to text and the particle node as well. And you can see over here under the type that it was set to text and mask. And this means that when you are using an external layer, you also need to tell it under the layer properties which layer to use. And similarly to all the compound effect, the condition is that the layer must be present in the existing comp. So in this case, we have this Stardust text layer and this is what's being used as a source. And just to show you if I'm going to double click on the Stardust text in order to edit the text, and I'm going to write something else over here, like after effects, and I'm just going to make sure that those lines are far away from each other, or at least not so close. Then I'm going to press enter, and I'm also going to hide the text panels by hitting command six and seven. And then if I'm going to return to the composition, we can see that now those particles are taking the After Effects text layer shape. Now, of course, this layer doesn't need to be visible. You can switch it off. This is just a reference for the effect itself. Now note that there is a little bit of a gotcha over here when you are using these browser presets. For example, if I'm going to return to the Stardust and click once again, in order to apply yet another preset and I'm going to visit the nodes once more and under the emitters I'm going to switch it to the object one 
which is going to use a 3D model in the OBJ format in order to create particles. And I'm going to choose replace because I want to replace everything that I have so far, including the nice text that I've just created. So when I'm doing it, just note that here in the timeline, the Stardust text layer that we've just created before, the one that says After Effects is still there meaning that those presets are not going to replace any existing layers that already was there before you use them, even though we said replace. It will replace all the settings here inside the Stardust panel, but just know that if you don't need this anymore, you can hide it or you can just get rid of it. This is what I'm going to do. So just know that this is how it's going to behave. So now we have this OBJ, which is once again, an emitter and a particle. And if I'm going to select this OBJ, we can see that over here the type is set to object. And what I want to discuss over here is that we have several emitter type. So now we are using the face outline. And just so we'll see it better from different direction, I'm going to click here inside the composition panel. And then I'm going to click C in order to activate the unified camera tool inside After Effects, which will allow us to orbit around the scene just so it will be more easier to see it. And then I'm going to click once again on the OBJ in order to activate it over here. Scroll down and I just want to call your attention that we have several types of emitting those particles along the axis of the 3D object. So in this case, this is set to face outline. We can switch to vertices, and this is how this is going to look. A volume, which will try to fill up the particles in the volume of this shape. A face or a surface. Now, some of those looks a little bit useless in this case. So for example, if I'm going to switch back to the volume, in order to fill up this volume, we need much more particles. And this is going to help us to describe what we are seeing over here. So depending on your design needs, you can switch from different stuff over here, which is a big advantage compared to different tools that are using this OBJ as a reference file. All right, so this is the basics of the emitter. Obviously, we haven't covered everything, but I think it's quite self-explanatory. So for example, if I'm going to change the speed, those particles are going to start to fly all over the place. And if I'm going to change the speed random, this will randomize the speed and allow some of the particles to move faster and some slower. So because this is so fast, you can just play with it and explore it using one of the presets or just by trial and error. <laughs>